Hi, this is AP Calc Notes, section 5.6. Inverse trig derivatives. When we do 5.7, that's going to give us the antiderivatives. So start off with this introduction. Uh, what happens when we want to try to find the secant of 3 pi over 7? Well, the secant is 1 over the cosine of 3 pi over 7. Now, this is a reciprocal function with this, and so the cosine function is. And so if I type this into my calculator, I don't know the exact value of this. If I put this into my calculator, that's what the secant's going to be. Now, what we'll deal with today, though, is that we'll have this notation here of uh, maybe 0.5. When we have this, this is not the same as this notation here. This right here means inverse function, which we will also see as arc cosine of 0.5. And this means, this is an angle measurement. And so with an angle measurement, I'm looking for the angle measurement such that it has the cosine value of 0.5. Well, there's an infinite number of those values. Well, to make this a function, we need to limit the domain of our original function to get this to work. So if we look at inverse trig functions, y equals the inverse sine, which is the arc sine, which is not 1 over the sine. Uh, if we look at the domain, the domain and range are just going to be the flipped around. We're just switching x and y. So it's just going to be the flip around of the sine function. So the domain is going to be from negative 1 to 1. And that's the same thing for the inverse cosine. And then the range for this. Uh, my inverse function, well, this goes from negative infinity to infinity. However, I want to limit my domain such that when I do the inverse, I just have a strictly increasing function so that my inverse is a function. And so with this, I'm going to be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So there's my range. And for this one, where can I limit this one? Well, I could do this piece here or this piece here. The math gods decided to go from 0 to pi. Okay, so that's the domain and range for each one of those. What do these graphs look like? You can put them on here. They just don't look so good. So I'm going to put them on autograph. And so let me pause. So here's a graph of the sine of x. So if I switch x and y... There's my graph. Well, this is not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. This blue one does not. So I just need this piece from here up to here, and that's all we're going to get. So if I change this one instead to y equals, watch what happens, um, arc sine of x, it just gives me this piece. And this piece is my uh, function. It's the inverse function. Okay, so all we did from this red one is we switched x and y to get this other one. We can do the same thing for the cosine, and this is what the inverse cosine looks like. It's this purple one. Okay, you can graph those on your calculator and see what those look like. If we do the inverse tangent, the third one there, uh, the inverse tangent, let me just pause and put this one in. So for the tangent, the arctan, I should say, uh, well, let's look at the tangent first. For the tangent, my domain is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So the range for the inverse tangent is going to be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Then if you look at this, your y values for the tangent, all reals. And so then my domain would be all reals for this one here. Okay? I drew this one in for the inverse cosine, and I drew this black one in for the inverse sine. It doesn't look great on these scales, but that's where we're at. Okay, go down to the next ones and see if you can evaluate the next values and pick out the correct ones for where we're at. So go ahead and pause this, and then we'll take a look at this. Okay, so let's see how we're doing here. If I do, what, that, what angle measurement has a sine value of 1 half? Well, there's many, many. There's an infinite number of them. But the only ones between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 well, the only one would be pi over 6. And so when we do the inverse sine, we're only looking at these two quadrants, first and fourth, between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 for our answer. This one, the arc cosine, a negative 1, well, that's going to be pi. 
And with the cosine, we're only going to be looking in the first and second quadrants. If you look at number 3, uh, this is how I work it out, but I know that I get square root of 3 over 3 from 1 over square root of 3. Well, that comes from a situation where the y-coordinate is 1 half and the x-coordinate is square root of 3 over 2. Where does that happen? Well, that's going to be pi over 6 again. However, I got this negative value. So the tangent is negative in the fourth quadrant. So this value would be negative pi over 6. So that's where we're at with that one. And for the inverse tangent, it goes along like the sine. It's always going to be in the first and fourth quadrant where your answers will be. Okay, this one you do with your calculator, and you use the inverse sine. So you go second sine of 0.8 and get that out. Do not do 1 over sine. This is a no-no. Okay, so why don't you calculate that and figure out what that one is and then see if you can go on to number 5, too. So you put that in your calculator, you just go second the sign button and do this. If you get a number that's bigger than 1, that means that you did the reciprocal, which is this isn't. So be careful with that. Now what about this one? Which one did you say, A or B? Pause if you haven't guessed. Well, it turns out that it's A. Because what happens is that for the arc cosine, the cosine value is one-third, which means the secant value is three. So you take the reciprocal first, and then you apply the corresponding reciprocal function with that. So you can plug that into your calculator and find that value. So what do you do with the arc cosecant? How are you going to do this on your calculator? You're going to take the sine of, I'm sorry, inverse sine. I, I can't take the inverse sine of something bigger than two, so that should clue me in that I need to take the reciprocal of that and I can put the negative up on top. So plug that into your calculator and then see what you do get. And there's our answer, negative 0.496. So how do we do these? Uh, we we did these in pre-calculus. Let's see if you remember how to, how to do this. What I like to say is that you take the insider information and build a right triangle with this. So if I go ahead and make a triangle, and usually I set up the triangle the same way as I do every time. Here it is, call this theta. And I'm gonna build it with this cosine information. Cosine, if you remember, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm gonna put the one, which is adjacent, over the hypotenuse, which is the three. Then I can go ahead and find this missing side. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if I take the hypotenuse squared minus this one, 9 minus 1, I get square root of 8. So that's my missing side. So what I do now is with the outside function, I just read off what that outside function is asking me to do. In this case, it's opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to take square root of 8 and put it over 1. And that's my overall value. Square root of 8 over 1. So build the triangle with the insider information and read it off with the outsider information. So if I build this one here, I might need the cousin, Cho Sha Keo. I don't know if you can see what I did there or not, but this would be cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So if I got cosecant, I got hypotenuse and then opposite. No, oh, I put that in the wrong spot. So if I find out what the missing piece here is that this is 9 minus 4, so this would be square root of 5. Now I'm going to read off the cosine. So cosine would be adjacent square root of 5 all over 3. So this answer is square root of 5 all over 3. Build it, read it. Moving on. Calculus. I think we're into calculus now. Oh yes, we are. Getting to the derivative portion of our program, uh, these things, this is uh, U prime, and you just, more so than anything, this is how you learn to do derivative formulas and plugging in the pieces that you need to do. So the derivative arc sine is U prime over the square root of one minus U squared. Now, if you notice, the arc cosine is exactly the same. However, it just differs by a negative sign. Arc tan, oh, just the opposite arc secant, oops, just the opposite. So in a lot of respects, you just have to remember some of these and then the other ones fall into line. So let's go ahead and prove this one and see how this sets up. If we take the derivative of the arc cosine, 
that we have this. So we're going to let y equals the arc cosine of x. So if I rewrite this and say, well, x is equal to the cosine of y then. They're inverse functions, so I can just go ahead and solve for x. Uh, then I'm going to uh, take the derivative implicitly. Derivative of x is 1. And then the cosine function, derivative of the cosine is negative sine. Leave the y alone. And as sometimes you people forget, chain off the y. So I have this right now. So if I solve for dy dx, dy dx is going to be 1 over the sine of y. Okay, so what we want to do now is take this y and replace this in there. So I'm going to go way over here. So this is just the next step after this. It's going to be negative 1 over the sine. What am I putting in there? Well, it's the arc cosine because that's the same thing as y. Arc cosine of y. And if we remember, oh, this is just like our little triangle business. Here we go. Build it with the insider information. This is a y, this is a 1. This is going to be a square root of, oh, I'm sorry, this is x. This is going to be square root hypotenuse squared minus leg squared. And so what we end up then with is dy dx is equal to negative 1 over, and then I read off the sign. The sign is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so it's just 1 minus this. There's my proof. So the trig totally disappeared. Wow, is that amazing. Okay, let's put this to good use. So let's take this one and try this one. We have the derivative of y equals arc sine of 4x. So we just are really just plugging this into the formula. So here's arc sine is equal to and I, I'm going to just put in 1 over u is equal to 4x. And we usually don't do u substitution with derivatives, but we're kind of picturing this and figuring out where everything goes. This is going to be 1 minus 4x quantity squared. I might say, where's u prime? Well, I didn't put that on top because usually we chain off at the end. So then the derivative of u prime would just be my 4. So overall, I'm going to end up with 4 all over 1 minus the square root. Yes, the 4 is squared. I get this right here. Can I take the square root of this piece? No, you cannot. You can't put that over a positive or minus sign. You can't do it piece by piece. So this is what we end up with. Okay. So if I do this one, this one, the simplification gets a little bit trickier, but it should be okay. dy dx is equal to, so I have a negative. Square root of, well, u is equal to x over 3, so it's going to be 1 minus x over 3, that whole thing squared. And then I'm going to have the derivative, u prime, on top, which is 1 third. And I still had that 4 as well, so I got 4 thirds on top. All right, now, here's where the simplification comes in. I'm going to have to take this 1 and get a common denominator with this other stuff. So I'm going to get negative 4. I'm going to leave the 4 on top. This 3 is going to go down below. And I'm going to have the square root of, this is, well, this is x squared over 9. So I need a 9 over 9 to put that together. And if I rewrite this, this is negative 4, 3, square root of 9 minus x squared all over 9. Now, I can take the square root of this one piece because it's just affected by the division, not by the minus sign. So this is a square root of 9, which is simply a 3. And that's a 3 outside. That's a square root of 9 inside. They're going to cancel with each other. So overall, I'm not, I'm not doing this very orderly, sorry. But this would be negative 4 over square root of 9 minus x squared. There you go. Okay, let's do a few more. All right, number three. This might be used by the rule, maybe not. Let's see. Uh, if we do this one, I have an outside function. Composition of functions start with the outside. Derivative of the cosine, this is your old rule, not your new rule, is negative sine. 
and I use the inside here uh, leave it alone so I'm gonna get the arc sine of X and then I need the chain so the derivative of this would just be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared u prime is just 1 but if I look at this what happens with this composition of functions well if you do a composition of inverse functions then it's just going to be simply x. So I'm going to get negative x all over the square root of 1 minus, uh, that should be minus, 1 minus x squared. Okay? So that's all you end up with. Now let's do this a different way. Let's use our right triangle to solve this one out as well. So if I build a little right triangle for this, I'm going to do build it with the arc sign, so it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, and so this would be square root of 1 minus x squared, this piece here, so that's the cosine. So I have y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. So I just rewrote this piece, I haven't done any calculus, into this piece. Now I can go and do dy dx. And to do dy dx, this is 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. So I take the 1 half out in front, raise it to the 1 less power, and chain off. So times negative 2x. And if you look at what happens here, the 2's cancel, and I'm left with negative x over the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is exactly what I had over there. Pause and look at that again if you have to. So either way works. Nice. Love when these things work out. What's going to happen with this right here when we're moving on to number four? dy dx. Come on, tell me. Yes, product rule first times the derivative of the second. Arc cosine would be negative one over the square root of one minus x squared minus the derivative of this. Well, we just did that, didn't we? It's the same thing as this. And so it's going to be actually the positive of this. I hope I did that right. Yes. And so it's going to be minus. Please, please help me. I did this wrong. I, I Well, you didn't see me do it wrong yet. But I forgot the second part. I needed to do the product rule. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which would simply be the arc cosine of x and so this is all from this first piece then I got to take the derivative of this which we just did down here I got a minus sign instead of that so it's going to be plus x over the square root of 1 minus x squared so from here I get this derivative right here because that's what we did already now if I look at this oh look at these two terms oh nice Woo -hoo. so the derivative would be equal to the arc cosine of x which means that, and this is how they find out some of these things, if they take the integral of the arc cosine, I forget this second C all the time, the arc cosine, I'm going to get whatever I started off with up here. Cool, huh? That's how they figure some of those antiderivatives out. All right, so with this one, Arc cosine, tangent, inverse, tangent. You can say arc or you can say inverse. However, this starts you being able to develop formulas and doing rules with different things. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much. And we'll work on some of this in class.